Hello, uh, my name is James Ross. I'm with High Performance Technologies, Inc. Uh, my slides, exploiting accelerator-based HPC for Army applications. This work was uh, funded by the Army Research Lab, and uh, the work was completed in collaboration with High Performance Technologies, Brown Deer Technology, and other uh, members of the US Army Research Lab. I'm gonna go over a little bit about the motivation of what we're working on, where we're going, um, what we've worked on in the past uh, in the investigation into GPUs, some of the algorithms we've looked at. Uh, in particular, I'm going to talk about the Octree algorithm on a GPU. One of the applications we've been developing is the ballistic threat simulation. Uh, I'll show you an early prototype of that uh, that's based on the Quadtree search algorithm and uh, the result is an application-specific ray tracer. Uh, and then go over some of the combined simulation and visualization uh, and results. So uh, the motivation behind this work, uh, we're seeing high-performance computing is staying generally in the lab, and uh, the work never really can uh, appear on the battlefield. And a big uh, change in the industry lately has been the push into mobile computing. So everyone is uh, holding a mobile, some kind of mobile computing device, whether it's a cell phone, a laptop, or a, a tablet computer. And we want to be able to push high performance computing to the end user uh, in a real time, practical manner. So we're putting the power of supercomputing into the hands of the Army warfighter. Uh, the work was developed, uh, we've been working on for about the last three years now, um, as I mentioned, in collaboration with Brown Deer Technology and HIPTI and the US Army. We've looked at a number of uh, hardware generations. As you know, GPU technology is rapidly changing over each iteration, um, unlike uh, multi-core technology, which basically maintains the same type of architecture. Uh, we've investigated both NVIDIA and AMD or ATI GPUs, and uh, we've actually looked at a number of programming environments that have evolved over the last few years, uh, including CUDA, RIC Plus, and OpenCL. Though since OpenCL has uh, come out, we've focused primarily on that. We've looked at a number of uh, algorithms and designed and optimized some of those algorithms. Um, so the goal was really to develop uh, an in-house understanding of these GPU architectures and specifically what, what applications can use them to their full potential. Uh, some of the algorithms we've looked at are encryption, and body dynamics, ballistics, image reg registration, seismic codes, ray tracing, Monte Carlo simulations, uh, radar image processing, and uh, electromagnetics. So these codes uh, work themselves, or these algorithms work themselves into a lot of uh, high performance computing codes. And some of these are more relevant to the battlefield than others, but I'll, I'll talk more about that later. The Octree algorithm uh, represents a recursive bisection of space in three dimensions. So you've got some three-dimensional volume. It's split into eight pieces, and each of those cells are split into eight cells and so on. Uh, this 3D spatial search uh, can be used for applications such as ray tracing, and there are more. Uh, we looked at this originally um, for ray tracing, and this graph here shows some of the results we had uh, just doing a ray polygon intersection search. Uh, it's order of magnitude faster on, on the GPU uh, compared to a single core. Um, an initial uh, application was the ballistic threat simulation. So we had a, a 3D scene here on the right. It's a, it's a small city scene in an urban environment. Um, given 
a known shooter location on top of a building near the center. We then calculate the line of sight paths uh, from the shooter to every single triangle in, in the uh, scene. And uh, we wanted to identify what areas were vulnerable um, or what areas had a, had a threat from the shooter and what areas were, were hidden or um, sort of in the shadow if you think of the, the uh, shooter as a light source. So this is how the calculation was completed. For, for each polygon in the scene, uh, you compute the line of sight and distance. If there is another polygon in the way, then it's obscured and, and not visible to the shooter. Uh, the accelerated uh, data structures uh, used, um, we used a quad tree, and, uh, which is an octree variant. Uh, the initial prototype used OpenCL. Uh, this, uh, as I said, the algorithm for each, uh, I guess is sort of a repeat of what I just said. Um, for each threat in the scene, in, in this case we only had one, we, we did all the intersection calculations on the GPU, and then the results were returned to the host and visualized using VTK in Paraview, which is a common visualization tool in HPC. Uh, this, the algorithm showed pretty good performance on the GPU uh, by comparison. The quad tree search algorithm is good for a more two-dimensional scene uh, because most of the, the data is relatively flat. There isn't a very large Z or, or height component to it because it's a, it's a large um, city scene. Um, it's a little bit different than the quad tree. Um, th there's a, an associated tree with this algorithm, and uh, this tree is uh, it, held in local memory for performance, and the triangle data that, that's embedded within the tree is, is in a, a global array. And so, uh, by comparison, the the CPU uh, linear method, which you're just searching uh, all triangles for intersection, um, had a slow performance here at about 323 seconds for our, um, for our test code. Uh, just implementing the quad tree search routine on, on the CPU uh, resulted in about an order of magnitude improvement. And then pushing this onto the GPU uh, in the massively parallel architecture resulted in a further order of magnitude improvement in execution time. Uh, we developed a prototype that was uh, used at the, demonstrated at the Army Science Conference last year. Um, this, this prototype was an extension of what we originally developed. Uh, this search from uh, every triangle uh, led to errors uh, because you're not actually looking at every point in the triangle. We were just using the center. So there was partial triangle occlusion that was, um, was incorrectly uh, identified as, as either a, a false hit or, uh, or a positive hit that was false. So um, this led us to develop an actual ray tracer where, where the visualization was driving the calculation so in this diagram here on the screen, for every pixel in the resulting rendered image, we have a ray cast from the, the, tr the camera or the, the viewer, and it then intersected with a scene geometry passing through the, the quad tree. And then from the intersection point with the geometry, we run another ray calculation back to the shooter. If the shooter uh, is seen from, from the intersection point, then we light up the triangle, or we light up the pixel as a uh, a threat location. So um, the main differences between these two algorithms is that the, uh, the second implementation actually uh, resulted in an image being processed by the GPU. So the visualization was actually driving the simulation. And this works out really well with uh, the GPU architecture and in the future APU architectures because they have a very close 
uh, simulation and visualization component to them. Uh, so in both cases, the map and the tree is copied to the GPU. Um, the, the th instead of um, being visualized in VTK in the first example, it, it's actually being uh, written to a bitmap and, uh, and then you can view it in whatever man manner you like. Uh, we've also uh, worked on getting that uh, directly rendered onto OpenGL. Uh, traditional HPC is built upon data generation through uh, simulation and then the visualization is post-processed. Uh, this technology allows you to remove that post-processing step and you can actually have dynamic or interactive uh, computation and simulation. Um, one of the things that's critical to this is exposing the OpenCL and Opal, OpenGL buffer sharing mechanisms within the uh, OpenCL API. Uh, without this, it would be a little bit uh, more difficult. You'd have to copy things to the host and then push them back out to the GPU in an OpenGL buffer. But by being able to uh, link them together, you, you skip that step entirely. Uh, we also worked on a, a dynamic scenario demonstration where we had a, a, a path that a shooter could take, or a threat in that case could take, and it would work its way through the scene. And for each uh, discrete point along the path, you can calculate uh, the threat to the, the rest of the environment. And uh, this resulted in a nice animation, which isn't actually shown in my presentation, but. Uh, it looked pretty cool. Um, we worked this into Google Maps, the Google Maps API, so that uh, you could actually push this out onto a number of different mobile devices, such as a, a cell phone or, or a tablet. Uh, this demonstration was shown at the Army Science Conference, and, and so attendees could actually walk by with their cell phone or tablet and pull it out and, and uh, log into the demo. And, and actually interact with the simulation. And uh, this is the kind of stuff that we, we want to push out to make it uh, easier to use and actually beneficial to uh, the warfighter. So our ongoing work is, is focusing on small work, workstation class high performance computers. Uh, they're gonna be placed in, in critical locations that need performance. Uh, we're going to be exploiting the, the OpenCL, OpenGL buffer uh, when it's beneficial to do so. If you're pushing it out onto, the, onto a mobile device, it's not necessarily beneficial. But uh, if you're uh, rendering directly from the, the, the workstation, you could, you could exploit that for performance. Uh, we're also looking at uh, sort of an application, appification of this where we can... Uh, have a, a large install base on mobile devices. Uh, also another thing we're working on is, is actually being able to have um, scenarios selected. You know, if there, A lot of the test data we use is based on, on one location, but we want to integrate it with uh, web-based uh, technologies to be able to pull different maps from, uh, from other areas. Uh, so I talked a little bit about the, the investigation of heterogeneous uh, compute platforms in the Army. Uh, I showed you the application-specific ray tracer that we developed. Uh, we've also investigated acceleration data structures, and we're going to be continuing to do that. Um, the prototype I showed you uh, combines the visualization and computation uh, for performance and uh, time to render and it cuts out uh, a lot of time there. Um, and in, in the future, we're gonna be working on more remote access scenarios.